Hey everyone, welcome back to Let's Talk. My name is John, and today here on the channel, we're going to be talking about a Spike Lee joint from 1989, Do the Right Thing. So Do the Right Thing is one of the most important films ever made. It was actually just ranked number one on IndieWire's list of the top 100 movies of the 1980s. While it wouldn't be my favorite film of the 1980s, it is definitely the most important film of the 1980s, and it's easily one of the most top 10 entertaining film of the 1980s. And Spike Lee is one of my top five favorite directors ever. I feel like he's very underappreciated, very undervalued, but Spike Lee himself knows how good of a director is because on this new 4K Blu-ray that we're also going to be talking about in this video, he knows that the movie he made is important and is going to stand the test of time. And that's another reason why I love Spike Lee. He's so confident. He knows how talented he is. And he really is one of the most talented directors. Because even though IndieWire put this film as number one film of the 1980s, I still don't even think that this is Spike Lee's best movie because he made Malcolm X, which I still think is the greatest biographical film ever ever made and that movie's a 10 out of 10 and do the right thing is a 10 out of 10 so it's really just 1a and 1b and he was also working with one of my favorite cinematographers ever as well in Ernest Dickerson who also directed the film Juice which is another film that I just absolutely love and the two of them came together and made this film this movie's written produced and directed by Spike Lee it stars Danny Aiello the owner of the pizzeria that's located in Bed-Stuy Brooklyn where this movie takes place it takes place over the course of one day a really hot day around 98 degrees and one thing that Spike Lee was doing when he was researching this film did research on the murder rates and apparently the murder rates go up when the temperatures go over 95 degrees and that makes all the sense of the world how pissed off are you when you're outside you're sweating you're soaking wet and you're just totally uncomfortable maybe you got to bring a second shirt like I do when you're outside and that you're already just kind of pissed off at the world as it is and now everything is getting under your skin and that's what this movie is about it just takes place over the course of one hot day in the summer everybody's already feeling the heat and now tensions are starting to rise down at Sal's Pizzeria where he works with his two sons Vito and Pino Vito's actually played by a young John Tedorello which is always fun to see him pop up and he does an outstanding performance in this movie I mean you really hate this guy you don't understand why he is the way he is his brother Pino's really cool you know he kind of understands Mookie Mookie is played by Spike Lee in this movie and as far as directors who also act I think Spike Lee is probably near the top of that list because you know you kind of believe his character you, you kind of believe that this is a real person. You don't just see Spike Lee. You see him really falling into this character. You know, a lot of times when directors put themselves in their movies, they don't really end up that good. Their performances stand out for all the wrong reasons. I'm looking at you, Quentin Tarantino. As much as I love Pulp Fiction, my second favorite film of all time, you really should have hired an actor to play the role that you chose to play in that film. On the other hand, in this film, Spike Lee does a damn good job acting, just like he does in Malcolm X. And it's funny because he's really pulled back on doing the acting thing, but I've always thought that his performances are pretty good, and he does a good job here as Mookie, the star of this movie, a real through line, even though it is an ensemble cast. This is also Rosie Perez's first film, if you could believe that. Spike Lee kind of discovered her at a club and just put her on film and then that really launched her into superstar and she does a phenomenal job in here she's dancing in the opening credits which i absolutely love Fight the power. One of my top 10 favorite opening credit sequences of all time. And then obviously you get the Public Enemy song playing over the top. Pretty much playing throughout the entire film because it really, you know, goes hand in hand and it's a classic song. Power. Fight the power. You got other actors who pop up in here. Samuel Jackson before he took off. John Savage pops up for one scene. A really young Martin Lawrence. So this movie really just caught the world at the perfect time. They filmed it on location using natural lighting. That's why you get Ernest Dickerson, like I said, one of the best cinematographers ever. You really see the heat in this movie. Like, the way they shot it, it is so warm looking. You know, the yellows, the reds, they painted a lot of the buildings around there red. You know, the building where Frankie Faison on and the boys are sitting out front, you know, basically doing nothing all day, but just hanging out, drinking some Miller High Lifes out there. And the buildings, the way they're painted, it all just looks so hot outside. You just feel the heat and the capture that on film. I think only this and Rear Window capture the summer heat feeling on film. I really think they nailed it with this movie and all that credit goes to Ernest Dickerson because he just shot this movie beautifully and then obviously the message of this movie is the most important thing the differences between races how we treat each other it's not even just the black and white thing you know we see how the white people are treating all the black people in bed -Stuy. you know Danny Aiello's character he's supposed to kind of come off as like the friendly guy who gets along with everybody but this day he even starts this movie saying I'm gonna kill somebody today because he's just so you know the day already started off bad even though 
though his regular good character that we see throughout the movie, finally by the end, he loses it, says the wrong thing, and really, he sets off the events of the end of this film because, you know, he just lost his temper at the wrong time. But nobody really is a hero or a villain in this movie. I mean, except for the cops. They are 110% villains in this movie. But I'm talking about our regular characters that we see. Mookie, Sal. You know, Vito's a dick, but he's just misguided. And Mookie's trying to point that out to him, that his anger is misguided. It's directed at the wrong people. You know, with that classic scene about, like, all of your favorite performers and actors, heroes are all black, but for some reason, you know, you hate black people. It doesn't make sense. And Mookie's trying to get that across to him. And it's really exploring that throughout this entire film. Even like the three guys sitting outside the building, they're pissed off at the Korean people for opening up a business in their neighborhood. But from what it sounds like, they opened up that business and it, and it actually improved the neighborhood, you know, and not to mention they're buying stuff from these guys. This movie isn't picking a side either way. They're just trying to show what is the right thing to do. Doctor, come on, what, what? Always do the right thing. And it all builds up to this incredible ending. This ending that's tough to watch and so brutal, but the movie builds up to it perfect. You feel the tension rising all the way to the third act of this film, and then what happens to Radio Rahim is so brutal and so hard to watch, and like Spike Lee says when he introduces this movie, you know, this stuff that happens in this film is still happening today. That's what makes this movie still stand the test of time and still be topical in 2023. As much as they improve, they don't completely change. You like to think we've moved on from things like this happening, but unfortunately we haven't and this movie tackles that whole subject matter in such a real way doesn't shy away that's why universal was really hesitant about this movie and luckily at the last second they decided to finally fully distribute it because they didn't know how the ending was going to be perceived and all these years later it's still kind of open to interpretation how you feel about it what is the right thing did mookie do the right thing or did he do the wrong thing and there really is no black or white it's all that gray area what it's like to be human all that is tackled in this movie how we all feel it all just comes off so well handled in Spike Lee's hands he knew exactly what kind of movie he wanted to make and he made a perfect film a film that will stand the test of time like he said this movie is a film that we'll be talking about in another 50 years hopefully things get better from there but either way we'll always have do the right thing and if you haven't seen do the right thing and you want to check it out on 4k blu-ray that we're going to talk about right now or you just want to check it out any which way you can see it I highly highly recommend it but before we dive into this 4K Blu-ray review, if you are a fan of 4K Blu-ray reviews, movie reviews, lists, podcasts, and shorts, we try and do them all here on the channel, and nothing helps this channel out more than by you just simply liking this video and subscribing to the channel. Let me tell you the story of right hand, left hand. It's a tale of good and evil. So this is the Universal Do the Right Thing 4K Blu-ray that, that was released back in 2020. Now there had actually been a 2019 Criterion Blu-ray that came out, which was a big upgrade over the previous, I believe it was 2010 Blu-ray, which was the Blu-ray that I owned before I got this. So I've never owned the Criterion Blu-ray, and I was trying to do some comparisons between all the different versions of this, but I can't do it without the Criterion Blu-ray. And from what I was able to find out, that Criterion Blu-ray is actually really good, but this 4K is still an upgrade over that. And this this 4K is gorgeous to look at right out of the gate. It's only got HDR 10, but the visuals are stunning. It's in the aspect ratio of 1.85. So this thing is going to fill up your screen and the resolution increase and the sharpness really stands out to me. The deep blacks, like the whole third act of this movie takes place at night. And in previous versions, you know, that stuff would look like a gray. It wouldn't hit those deep blacks like you imagine it would but it really does the firemen suits when they show up. You could see every bead of sweat on everyone's face, and they really captured that summer heat when they were shooting the movie. Ernest Dickerson really caught that perfectly on film, but now with this 4K, you could see just every bead of sweat on everyone's face, on their arms. You could just see how hot everybody is. You know, every bead of water at the end of the film when they're trying to put out the fire on the fireman suits you could see it all i mean the resolution is incredible the hdr 10 does such a good job because when they shot this movie it was supposed to come off very warm so yellow orange tone to the entire film and they finally nailed it with this 4k blu-ray the previous blu-ray i have was just a little cool looking in my opinion and that just really wasn't the regular color temperature of this film they finally got the perfect color temperature what they were going for on this new 4k and to shoot it like that is incredible you know nowadays you could just adjust that on sliders on premiere pro but back then you actually had to shoot it 
on film that way, and you really had to know how to use a camera. That's why Ernest Dickerson is one of the best cinematographers we ever had, and it really just shows on this 4K that it was so easy to bring over to 4K Blu-ray and look this good. I cannot sell these visuals short. They are a 10 out of 10 beautiful. Now, as far as the audio goes, you get a DTS X track on here, which is rare. We don't get those too often, and it's really, really good. Now, I don't have the perfect setup to test every single feature of a DTS X track, but from what I was able to hear, it sounded great. The only thing I noticed is the score is pretty high in comparison to the dialogue, and sometimes you might notice the score more than the dialogue. Now, this was always there, but it just feels like the score volume was mixed a little too high for my liking, personally, certain scenes especially, but it's not something that's a problem throughout the film, and it's a very minor complaint. It's just something that I never noticed until I got to this 4K, so I feel like they definitely mixed it a little bit differently this time around. Still great. You know, you get Public Enemy playing throughout this entire film, and it sounds great. When Radio Raheem turns up his boombox, we feel that boombox turning up, so you know, they did a great job mixing this track overall. Just have some minor complaints about it, but this is the best the film has ever sounded. Even if my complaints are minor, it's still a huge upgrade over previous versions. And now the extra that's the one thing that I would love to compare with the Criterion Collection, but there are a ton of extras on here. There's a making of documentary about an hour long that I just absolutely adore. I mean, they have stock footage from when they were shooting before and after 1989 in bed Brooklyn, where they constructed all these buildings. They built the pizza place, they built the Korean market just to tear them down, essentially. So <laughs> it's just awesome to show how the production design was really put into this. And, you know, it's shot on, like, cameras in 1989, so everything it looks all fuzzy. It really takes you back. It actually makes you feel nostalgic watching that making of documentary, but you get plenty of interviews. You get a new intro for the 4K that was shot in bed so that was pretty cool, done by Spike Lee. That's really nice because you get an intro back from 2009, I believe, for the making of documentary on here also. So you can see those differences in the years have gone on, but his message stays the same. You get plenty of other interviews, trailers. I mean, there is so many different extras on here. They really loaded them up. Most of them are on that Blu-ray, so that's a previously released Blu-ray, so that would make sense. But the 4K has some on there as well, like I said, that brand new intro. So I'm very happy with the extras. As an extras fan that I am, I am so glad that this thing got loaded up. So I haven't shown you guys yet, but here's the packaging for this. There was also a 4K steel that came out that year and it looks different than the Criterion Blu-ray. The Criterion Blu-ray looked like the previous Blu-ray where they used the red background would do the right thing in yellow. This time they went for the blue to look like the original movie poster which I really appreciate because blue is probably the best color. You got a really nice slip cover here. You slide that off. Same artwork underneath. You get your Blu-ray in black and then you get a nice individual disc design for the 4K Blu-ray which I will always appreciate. So great packaging here as well. So I have almost no complaints about this 4K Blu-ray from Universal. Visually it's a 10 out of 10. This honestly, while I was watching it, I was thinking, this really could be a showpiece. I'm surprised that no one brings this movie up more often when they're talking about great 4Ks. And that includes me, because I'm definitely going to be bringing this up as one of the best looking 4Ks that I have ever seen. Now, audio wise, it isn't perfect, and that's the one flaw I really have with this entire package. I just wish that some of the background music had been just mixed down a little bit lower, but again, that's a minor complaint because the dialogue is crisp and clear. Everything else is perfect about that audio track, so it's just a minor complaint. This thing is loaded with extras, great packaging. So how would I rate this 4K Blu-ray on a score of one to 10? I'm gonna give this a very, very solid 9.5 out of 10. Definitely check this one out if you haven't seen it yet. And if you haven't even seen the film yet and you don't have the money to get this 4K, I could just highly recommend this film because it's definitely one of those movies that you have to see. But wait, there's more. It's Monday and that means it's time for our digital code giveaway. So on Friday's video, I asked you guys two digital code giveaway questions. I asked you guys, what was your favorite superhero film from the 80s and 90s? And who is your favorite DC character not named Superman or Batman? And I'd have to say that the top three were either Catwoman. <laughs> the Flash was pretty popular. And surprisingly, Green Lantern. Green Lantern had a pretty rough outing in the movies, but he had a pretty good career in DC animated films and animated TV shows, so there's still hope, and James Gunn has said that he's probably going to bring back the Green Lantern character in some form in his DCEU, and we can only hope so, because there is a lot of material there that they could work with. And, you know, Ryan Reynolds has always been a good sport, so I'm sure he wouldn't mind if they try and bring that character back to life. But anyway, let's spin this magic wheel and see who our two lucky winners are. First wheel spin coming up. <laughs>
how rude. Well, I was supposed to say Bill how rude. But Bill, we're going to remove your name. Spin again. All right, that was supposed to say Bill How Rude double zero, not Bill, not Bull How Rude, but congratulations, Bill. And then our other winner is Brian. Brian's been actually entering the digital code giveaway since pretty much the very beginning. I think we had 70 names on the wheel today, and he was entering when we had seven names. So congratulations, Brian. He also keeps track of like the stats and who wins each week, so that's pretty awesome. So congrats, Brian. And if you don't know how this works, reach out to me at my email address, let's talk ENTMT at gmail.com, and let me know which of the digital codes you want. As long as the other winner didn't take it, that digital code is all yours. And we're going to be doing a big giveaway this Saturday here on the channel. I know this is the digital code giveaway, but we're going to be doing a physical giveaway. Well, I guess it's technically a little bit of money, but all you got to do is submit a $5 Super Chat on our live show this Saturday, August 26th at 4.30 p.m., and we are going to be giving away basically all of my doubles and any movies that I've chosen to get rid of my collection. So I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is basically do what we do with the Magic Wheel. So if you give $5, your name gets put on all four wheels for all four stacks of movies, for all four lots, basically, and you have your shot at all four of them. If you give a $5 Super Chat... Your name automatically goes on the wheel. We're going to spin that wheel live right there. All this stuff is going to be done live this Saturday. I'm going to have Faith there helping me out to make sure everything goes smoothly. Plus, we'll just be hanging out, having a good time, talking movies, talking physical media, whatever you guys want to do. So all you got to do is just submit one $5 Super Chat and you're entered into all of those giveaways. I figured instead of selling these, I'd help out the people supporting this channel. And even if you win and you choose not to keep the movies and you want to sell them yourself for a profit, that's cool too. I just want to do something fun here on the channel just to interact with you guys. So hopefully you guys entering into the digital code giveaway, you guys show up this Saturday, August 26, 2023, where we'll be having some fun here on the channel. So make sure you look out for that. Look for this thumbnail that's right here behind me. And I'm really looking forward to it, just to talk with you guys, and we'll have a good time. And then, of course, the Digital Code Giveaway will be going on this Friday. Again, I believe this Friday's video for the Digital Code Giveaway is going to be my review of the Universal Back to the Future Trilogy box set. I just watched Back to the Future 1 last night. I'm going to be revisiting them all this week, and I'll give you my full thoughts on the franchise and on that beautiful-looking 4K box set that came out a couple years ago. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for being here with me on another episode of Let's Talk. If you want to continue to support this channel, nothing supports this channel more than by just simply liking this video, subscribing to the channel, getting out in those streets, and telling your friends about us. We'll be seeing you around.